right, shalom, you guys, and welcome back to the channel. I got something else I want to share with you. If you know who Rex Bear is over at the Elite Project, he just did a really amazing interview today with Kevin Jamison, uh, 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 author and a, phys uh, a physicist, talking about the crustal shift. Um, one section of this caught my attention is when he started talking about Velikovsky, talking my love language, and uh, some of the, the things that I've been sharing on my channel. Um, and so I kind of want to blend this. I got permission from Rex to do this. You guys, if you haven't already, go to Rex and subscribe. Make sure you watch his complete video. I'm going to show you just a section when he's talking with this physicist about Velikovsky and some of the earth changes and some of the things that, that that it seems like the Bible is talking about itself. This is why this is important to kind of um, discuss this. Uh, if, you, if you've uh, been in, in previous videos that I've done, I've talked about the fact that all these um, signs in the heavens, the, the biblical prophecies, what it's telling us, where we're headed, and how these things are going to take place. And what he describes in this, I believe, is a perfect example of some of these cyclical events, these uh, catastrophic events in the earth that seem to have a pattern that we can clearly see in the Bible. He even cites a couple of them, Joshua's long day, right? And the fact that Velikovsky, Velikovsky pointed out, uh, because he was uh, he was a non-religious Jew, but he knew he knew the Bible, uh, that if we cross-reference some of these events in the Bible with what is recorded in other cultures, if there was a long day in, in Joshua, 24 hours, then then what would be happening on the other side of the earth? Well, in, in the Chinese record, it was the longest night, a 24-hour night period that took place. So this is a validation of the biblical account. So that's why it's important to point this out. Come with me now over to Leap Project with Rex Bear and this amazing uh, interview. We're going to watch just a section of it. And then we're going to talk about a code that I did in uh, 2013 with Siding Spring when I first learned about the electric universe theory and started uh, making the connection to the Bible. It's an amazing uh, journey. Let's take a look at it right now. So that was in between, let's say, uh, 40, I think the project ended in 46 or 48, something like that. And then there was Velikovsky. And Velikovsky published... The World's in Collision. Yes. Now, that's a shocking book. Anybody watching this podcast, if you haven't read that book, I recommend it. It shocked the world, and it still shocks people today. Guys, I, I had all three in his series, World in Collisions, and, um, and, there's, and there's two others um, that are part of that. Very interesting read. He's, he's, he's right about that. If you haven't read that, that's something you can find that for free on the Internet, by the way. Velikovsky was somebody that lived um, probably, I don't know, he died in the, in the 50s or 60s, but he, he was he was. He was a he was somebody a, a beyond his generation. That's for sure. He was a genius. He was actually trained as a psychologist or psychiatrist, but he actually knew a lot about astrophysics physics, and actually was the first one that told us what happened with Venus. Science did not understand this at the time, and he had come under a lot of criticism. But it turned out later well after he died that he, what he had said was actually true so um, i've always been fascinated with velikovsky emmanuel velikovsky is his name because uh, velikovsky what he was trying to do is trying to rationalize the biblical timeline of events and exodus with um the uh he had a different timeline i think it was in the the talmud and you know jewish or uh anyway he had two timelines that were 1500 years apart and he realized that hey maybe this big event here is the same as this in which case the timelines could be aligned so he did a lot of research on that and he concluded that are you ready for this he concluded that jupiter emitted Venus as a comet, and Venus got inside of the Earth's orbit. So Venus is almost in the same 
and the uh, now I have to take a tangent. Okay, comet tails. Uh, we're taught. Oh, and when he said this, by the way, I just got to put this out there. The science community and academics in general laughed him out of the building. You guys, he was ostracized and come under extreme criticism and scrutiny. Same as thing that happened with uh, Isaac, uh, not Isaac Newton, Einstein in, toward the end of his life. Um, he was ostracized because he started speaking things in a spiritual sense and, and um, he wasn't respected. It's, this happened to Velikovsky and what turned out is that he was absolutely right. Science actually proved that his theory was correct. He was the first one that said that Venus would, would be a very hot planet. We didn't know this. We didn't know this. Uh, as, as, you know, as as astronomers and things like that, we can observe, but we had no idea until they sent probes and and, and just and verified what he said. Also, the rotation is is opposite of what everything else is in the solar system. He was the first one to say that this was what, what, what would be the case, and he was laughed at when. But it was true, you guys. He was spot on on a lot of things that he said. Well, comets are, are dirty snowballs that melt in space at absolute zero, and uh, the ice heads off in a tail. The problem with that theory is that the tail always points away from the sun. And what's really happening on these comets is they're highly charged with electrical charge. And because the sun is positive, comet's positive, the tail's positive, they repel, and that's why the tail is always repelled away from the sun, and that's why the comet tails always point away from the sun. Well, Velikovsky asserted that the Earth got in the tail of Venus. And so at the time of Exodus, you you know, uh, the biblical text, I'm not an expert on that, but, you know, you read about uh, fiery rocks of brimstone falling from the sky and you, uh, you know, 40 days of darkness and stuff like this, right? Which would all make... He, he misspeaks here, obviously. He doesn't know the text intimately. It wasn't 40 days. It was three days of darkness and things were, were happening like there was a, this plasma... Uh, column of plasma that came down like fire remember he, he traveled with the people as fire by night and cloud by day and so we see this effect that happened uh, also all of the the uh, curses on egypt that took place that could have been something that happened in a in a natural phenomenon that cascaded um again yahuwah works in his creation when he does these miracles right so what caused the top of the mountain to be on fire at sinai and and turn the whole you can look on google earth today and see the whole mountaintop uh the ridge is all black but from the ground with the sun shining off of it it appears to be as blue as sapphire which is the biblical account that the people stood at the base and was seeing the top of the mountain as sapphire right but we also hear from or, or see in the account that fire danced on the top of the mountain and uh they heard all these sounds and things it was very terrifying the earth shook violently um which is indicative of something taking place i believe in uh the outside of our atmosphere so let's continue what he says makes sense if venus is between the sun and the earth you know, it had rained down rocks on Earth, right? And it had blocked the sun, right? Well, that happened twice in Velikovsky's research, not just once, twice. So Velikovsky, uh, oh, and by the way, I'm going to say this at the risk of being repetitive in this interview, and I'm going to say this later on as well. The problem, this through the academic, because if Velikovsky was right, that meant that all the astronomers, the astrophysicists, the geologists, the uh, paleontologists, like all of them, they missed the boat, right? Because uniformitarianism uh, says, oh, don't worry. The solar system has been this way for millions of years. Venus has always been around. Nothing bad will happen. There will be no random chance that Jupiter will pop out Venus and destroy the Earth, right? 
So did he say what caused Jupiter to do that? Was it Saturn itself getting closer to Jupiter that created that? These two massive. Uh, no, he never. He never said exactly why. At least in the stuff I read, but uh, it's it's known that if you have a body that has too much electrical charge on it, there's what they call the force of expansion, and so. You can do these lab experiments in high school. Um, so the force of expansion is the idea that the electrical charges don't like each other. And the best little story that I have for explaining this is uh, I got it from some guy. He was a teacher and he says, imagine a bunch of spiky haired students. And, you know, they got big hair and they don't like standing next to each other because it compresses their hair which is the field, the, the charge, right? And so this is why if you have a, a pen or a spike, this is why the sparks and the charges always come off the end, the sharp end. Because if you imagine a bunch of spiky haired students uh, standing in the hallway, and then they get to the curve at the end of the hallway, you see on the curve, they got more room for their spiky hair. And so more of them go into that little curve, more charge. And when you have more charge, eventually it breaks down the atmosphere and creates a spark. So if you have a planet that has too much charge, it needs to get rid of the charge. And it needs charge carriers to carry the excess charge away. And so when you have a, a planet or a comet that has too much electrical charge, it just rips it just rips off the surface like a comet tail, right? And it, the charge goes with the, uh, with the particles. And so that increases the total surface area. So if you have a certain, let's say we have 10 units of charge on this surface area and we kick off this one, well, now we've got, you know, maybe nine units on the big guy and we've got more charge distributed over a larger surface area. So th this is known science. And so that's what I believe happened with Jupiter. It but, kicked... but what would cause that to get more electrical charge? Could it be Saturn itself getting closer to it? And and Jupiter is almost like a fell dwarf star, isn't it? As such as Saturn? Yeah, the, the outer, uh, I mean, these are really good questions that you're asking. When uh, planets or bodies... Uh, what we what he was basically talking about there, you guys, was a static charge. And this I, I've talked about this before with the electric universe. OK, well, you've seen the, the thumb thumbnails that I put on, on the videos where you have a planetary body next to the Earth and there's a lightning bolt between the two. OK, now this is really important because several years ago I didn't understand this. And there was a comet that was taking place uh, in in the sky. That was going to have a close approach to Mars. And that comet was called uh, Comet Sidon Springs 2013 A1. And I found that in a code with the word collides runs right through it. Okay. So um, I want to show you that code here and talk about that just for a moment and why that's important because it, it proves a lot of this stuff. We want to believe. We didn't understand it. And also, I want to read to you Isaiah 24 uh, at the same time, because I think this is one of several um, biblical accounts or prophecies that talk about these these kinds of things. Of course, we got in, in the Torah, um, Joshua's long day. Then in the story of Hezekiah, we can see the back the, the you know, the sun goes back 10 degrees. And if you look really closely in the text, we can see other events that uh, seem to lay out a pattern. For, for ex example, the deluge of Noah uh, and what took place at that time, uh, uh, obviously a cataclysmic event that took place, right? So <clears throat> let's look at that for just a moment. Real, real, real quickly. I found this in 2013 when they named this comment because I was looking for Wormwood. In, in this interaction and you know when i saw the word collides running right across the the axis term itself and not only that that same word in a vertical anomaly so you had it there twice it was two witnesses that i i saw this you also had the words to strike 
over there. So I was calling it as a deep impact. But what I didn't understand was that the code was was the one that was interpreting what was happening, not not me. Um, and this this is known in hindsight. And, and by the way, I can show you on the channel where we documented this in in a couple of days, uh, October. 18th and 19th, something like that. 2014 is when this took place. I have it on, on video where we were talking with the scientists who'd found this comet. They were talking about the electric universe. First time I'd ever heard that term. They'd also were concerned about a plasma discharge that was going to take place because they didn't think there was going to be a, a deep impact, but they did believe there was going to be such a close approach that the two were going to interact and there was going to be a static discharge. And in hindsight, we know that actually happened. It was all here in this code. Um, and, and this is not the only code that's here about Siding Spring. As you can see, Wormwood appears vertical here. That is a completely different table right there. And there's probably thousands more dealing with this, these very subjects in this matrix right here that we can't see, right? But we, we, with the information that we are dealing with, we see all the variables that indicate that something was, was going to take place. Um, the interaction with Mars and the comet, a plasma discharge, all that took place. So the collision actually happened. It wasn't a deep impact. The code didn't say deep impact. I did. That's how I was interpreting. But again, at this time, very early on in, in my YouTube experience, I was learning to interpret these codes. The code always said collide. NASA said a year after this event that that, in fact, was what happened. And, and we know this because of a an astronomer, I believe is in, in Sweden, who captured it all on his telescope in, in a video. And so we could see in that video that Mars lit up like a light bulb. We were all waiting patiently for the video that would come in with the satellites that are around Mars, but what happened? NASA cut the feed. Remember that? So we could never see. It was lucky this, this scientist uh, astronomer caught it on camera, and we were able to verify that the, that is what happened. Um, so I wanted to share that with you guys. Uh, this, is, this is really indicative in some, in, in some of these codes that we see where we can take real-time events, look it up in the codes, and we can track and almost see what's what's going to happen. We can see all the possibilities. It is very documented and evident that word collides was always there. The event actually happened. The atmospheres collided. That was NASA's words. And created a static charge that is probably something that this Earth has seen over many times. And, and we can see that in some of the scarring in on, on the planet. You just search Google Earth and look. You can see some places where it's very likely that a static charge happened. And it was probably very violent on this Earth. And this is why we can see in some of the documentation from Rex Baer and others have gone out into the desert of the Southwest and see all the pictographs where natives were was recording the best that they could in, in these pictographs. Um, on the stones, events that were taking place, right? So it all plays a role. Let's go look at what it says in Isaiah 24, because this is why Velikovsky talked about these kinds of things is because of what the Bible says. What does the Bible say? Do you know your Bible? Isaiah 24 is a prophecy that Isaiah made from the Father, and it talks about a particular time and something that happens to the earth that's never happened in our lifetime. You guys, we've never seen this before, but this says it's going to happen. And this is what it says. See, yod heh vav -Hey, the name of the creator, by the way, some call him Yehovah, Yahuwah, Yahweh, that's his name. See, yod heh vav -Hey is making the earth empty and making it waste and shall overturn its surface, and shall scatter abroad its inhabitants, and it shall be as with the people of the priest, with the priest, as with the servant, so with his master, and as with the female servant, so with his her mistress, and as with the buyer, so with the seller, and as with the lender, so with the borrower, and as with the creditor, so with the debtor. That means everybody. There's nobody going to escape these, even those that are going to have caves and places to hide when they cry out for the rocks to fall on them 
Everybody is going to be experiencing this that is alive on the earth. That is guaranteed. Here's what it says. The earth is completely emptied and utterly plundered for Yohevav has spoken his word. The earth shall mourn and wither and the world shall languish and wither. And the haughty people of the earth shall languish for the earth has been defiled under its inhabitants because they have transgressed the Torah and changed the law and broken the everlasting covenant. Therefore, a curse shall consume the earth and those who dwell in it shall be uh, will be punished. Therefore, the inhabitants of the earth shall be burned. Plasma. War happens at the same time. So imagine that. This is truly the time of Jacob's trouble, right? Few men shall be left. The new wine shall fail. The, vein, the vine shall languish and all those glad at heart shall sigh. The joy of the tambourine shall cease and the noise of those who rejoice shall end. The joy of the lyre shall cease. No more do they drink wine with song. Strong Greek drink is bitter to those who drink it. They can't even enjoy, you know, their pastime of, of drowning away, you know, their feelings. You know, it's it's not even worth it anymore because of the, the gravity of what's taking place on the earth. There's a crying for wine in the streets and all joy shall be darkened. The gladness of the earth shall be gone. The city is left in ruins and the gate is stricken with destruction. For thus it is to be in the midst of the earth among the people like a shaking of an olive tree, like the gleaning of grapes when the grapes harvest is done. Amazing references here. There, there's, we can go on a rabbit trail on that. They lift up their voice and sing of the excellency of Yahuwah, Yahweh, yod heh They shall cry aloud from the sea. Therefore, the praise of yod heh is in the east. The name of Yahuwah, yod heh Elohim of Israel, and all the coastlands of the sea. From the ends of the earth, we shall hear songs, splendor to the righteous one. But I say, I waste away, I waste away. Woe unto me, the treacherous betray, and the treachery, the treacherous betray. You haven't seen the worst in people until the worst of times, uh, my friend. But you will also see the best of people in the worst of times, too, at the same time, right? Fear in the pit. And the snare are upon you, O inhabitants of the earth. And it shall be that he who flees from the noise of the fear falls into the pit, and he comes up from the midst of the pit is called in the snare. For the windows from on high shall be opened, and the foundations of the earth shall be shaken. That means the whole earth. The earth shall be utterly broken. The earth shall be completely shattered, and the earth shall be fiercely shaken. The earth shall stagger like a drunkard. That means back and forth. It shall totter like a hut, and its transgressions shall be heavy upon it, and it shall fall and not rise again. This is the great and terrible day, you guys. And in that day, it shall be that Yohevav punishes on high the host of exalted ones, and on the earth the sovereigns of the earth, that means all the leaders and kings who, who defiled this earth. And they shall be gathered together as prisoners and are gathered into the pit. And they shall be shut up in the prison and shall be punished after many days because this is judgment. The moon shall blush, blush that's a blood moon, and the sun shall be ashamed. It will be darkened. That's a, a an eclipse. For yod heh vav -He of Ho shall reign on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem before the elders in esteem, you guys. And I can go on and on with the Bible prophecies that, that are all over. I mean, Revelation has many of them. So does Daniel. So does Ezekiel. Okay, about these coming day of war and destruction because of the, the transgressions of the earth, because of the wickedness that they run wild on the earth. Finally, that day of reckoning is coming. And not only the, the inhabitants, but the host on high are being public, uh, uh, punished. You guys, if you haven't already, and I'm going to do a recording of this, the Adam and Eve story, um, you can go over to Suspicious Observers and put in Earth Cataclysms, uh, Catastrophe, excuse me, and find these videos. This is a, a book that was um, classified. 
by the CIA in 1966, when Velikovsky pro pro produced his books, there, a lot of people were talking about these earth catechisms that took place. You can find something really interesting in, in this story right here. Uh, and not, not to scare you or anything like that, but it's happened before. Why would the CIA hide this book and, and redact a lot of pages of this and ban it in 1960, in the 1960s? Um, that makes me want to read it. You can actually listen to it on audiobook. It's um, The Adam and Eve Story by Chan Thomas. You guys, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. If you are interested in doing Bible codes, please email me at the link that I put below. Uh, the code searcher at outlook.com is my email if you're interested in the codes. Um, you guys, this is a, a deal for you that I'm offering this course. It, we're dropping $25 off the cost of this course uh, just because I, I know that everyone's having a hard time in this economy. And coming back with this school at that same price, I just could not see that people could actually do that. So I'm dropping the price on that. Hopefully we could fill at least two classes up. I've got plenty of help to help me do this with, with Jacob and with Scott. And I'm trying to recruit a couple of other people. Uh, I'm Brother Martin. Don't want to throw any, too many names out there until I've talked to them, but um, have plenty in, uh, of instruction for you if you want to learn how to do this, how to search things. Um, also, if you want to get your name done, email me. We will we'll get a code to you. That's all I have for you guys. Shalom to you. We'll see you in the next video.